In the latest episode of Hack My Growth, we're gonna be taking a look at schema.org and the role it plays within Google Search's rich results. Hey, thanks so much for checking out this video. If you've watched our channel before and you haven't yet hit subscribe, please do so now. And don't forget to click on like if you like the video you're watching, and also feel free to add a comment or question below. We'd love to engage with you here online. We create new content each week to help you get the most out of your digital marketing activities. All right, let's go. So a lot of people have questions about what is schema.org and how does that compare to Google's structured data rich results? Well, in this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about the difference between the two or really how they work together in order to help you rank for those specific rich results. So what is schema.org? It's a vocabulary that is used to cover entities and the relationships between those entities and the possible actions that can take place. You can use this to extend uh, the knowledge of your site, to extend the meaning of your content in your text by adding structure to it with this specific language. Now, this was a language that was developed with the help of a number of different search engine providers, Google and Bing and Yandex and Yahoo, to name a few. And it's one that has been adopted by a number of different websites and is continually used as probably the most known uh, structured data vocabulary on the web today. So what is Google's structured data rich results? Google uses structured data to actually understand the content and the context of a page. So you can earn these rich features by adding certain structured data to your specific website pages. Now Google uses the schema.org vocabulary to enable rich results. And we can learn quite a bit about these different types of structured data that we can use to earn rich results by going to the developers.google site and understanding a little bit deeper what's going on behind the search gallery. Now, this is something really important to understand. When we are targeting rich features, we want to rely on the specific documentation that is provided to us from the developer.google site. This is going to tell us the exact markup that we need to add to our sites in order to earn these rich features. Now, schema.org will have a lot more. It will have extra properties and more information that can be added but for the specifics of earning rich features and rich results, we need to follow the guidelines that Google gives us. So even if you want to extend things with schema.org, that's fine, but you need to make sure that you have the attributes and the objects that are needed within the developers.google.site. So here's a little bit more information from Google. Uh, this was covered on SEO Roundtable, looking at the difference between schema and Google structured data. And this is what John Mueller said. He said, in particular, we support a subset of the functionality or the different types of markup from schema.org. So like I said before, they're using the vocabulary. And those are the things that we would show in the search results. So Google's taking certain things and certain types of markup from schema.org and using that to enable rich results within the search results. He goes on to say that everything else is essentially kind of like a nice to have, um, something where you're adding a little bit more of information. And then he goes on to say he doesn't expect this to actually have any impact on search. So if we jump over here, this is the uh, developers.google site, which talks about the rich results uh, and understanding how we can use structured data. As you can see here, they've got a number of different structured data types. You've got article, books, breadcrumbs, carousel, courses, and the like. All of these are different types of markup that you can add, and they also give you a little image of what it would look like here uh, within a specific search result. Now, you can walk through each one of these, click into them, read a little bit about it. So if we look in here in article, it's gonna tell us that there's two different types, one with AMP and one with non-AMP pages. And then here, it's going to give us an example of what that structured data might look like. Again, we're seeing here the context of schema.org and it's gonna say you know, what's, what type of it, it's a, it's a news article, um, and then here's the headline, the images, and the like. You're also gonna see guidelines here. So you wanna make sure that you follow the guidelines and the things that Google is looking for when they're looking at this type of markup. So this is extremely important when you want to implement this markup on your website, especially when we get into AMP, they've got uh, logo guidelines, so you wanna make sure that you follow those, and go a little bit deeper and understand here each of the objects that are required when you're building out these types of markup for rich results. Again, they're using the schema.org vocabulary, but these are the things that Google requires specifically. Now, when we look at article schema over here at schema.org, you'll notice that there's a lot more properties than what we saw in the Google documentation. Uh, everything from 
the creator or the copyrights. Um, you've even got audio. You can mark up uh, speakable, which this will impact things like Siri or Google or any of these other digital assistants. So there's a lot of things that you can do here with schema.org that are not required for the rich features. So there's some people who have marked up their site only looking at schema.org. Maybe they've missed some of these required categories over here and they're not getting indexed the way they think that they should be or maybe not earning a rich feature. Now, if you wanna earn rich features, you need to follow these, these requirements here. Like if you're a non-AMP page, you need to have image, a headline, date published, and modified. If you're an AMP page, you have a lot more requirements here. But what if you want to add some additional markup here? Like, is that something you should do? Well, in my opinion, that's an absolute yes. You should leverage this and add as much context and much information as you can. Now, I know that John Mueller said in his quote that this wouldn't likely result in a positive uptick in search. But if you actually look at the data and you actually look at how certain sites perform when they do extend their structured data, they model their content a little bit deeper and they make it easier, one, for the crawlers to read and two, for the crawlers to understand and specifically understand the intent. We have seen in a number of tests this result in an uptick in organic traffic. So start with the basics, go for the Google Structured Data Guidelines, make sure that you're following the guidelines that are here within their article, and then make sure that you look for ways to extend your markup a little bit further. So one of the things you need to do is run experiments to see what the actual impact of you making these changes is. So I wanna share uh, some real results from extending your schema. Now this is an experiment that was done by WordLift using the local markup. So as a result of extending their markup, they were able to see a 5% increase in the number of clicks coming from Google search. So to make sure that this was actually relevant, it wasn't just by chance, they used casual impact. And here they're able to reduce some of the fluctuations and able to actually get a, a positive um, probability associated with this change. And as you can see here, uh, here was the, the graph here from Casual Impact, which we can see that is a positive change and that we know that also from this data that was statistically significant. So we can see specifically that making the change for this specific site had a positive impact. If you want to read more, please check out the link which I will provide below. Now to show that this doesn't happen in isolation, that it's not just a one-off thing, uh, this is an experiment that we ran um, using some extensions of Entity Markup with one of our clients' websites. And after three weeks of building the model and marking up the site uh, more extensively with entities and extending the schema.org, we saw actually a 12.4% increase in clicks from search. We also did the same thing by leveraging casual impact. And we found that the probability of attaining this effect by chance was extremely small, that the statistics was significant. And this is something we've extended further on this site. So it's really important that you run your own test, that you don't just you know, take Google's word for it because they, they, they kind of don't always tell the whole story. They kind of beat around things at times. And sometimes the crawlers do like the fact that you extend your structured data and you provide more value. So here are some key takeaways. Number one, schema.org is a structured data vocabulary. That's all that it is. It's a vocabulary that we can use to mark up our content, our site. Now, Google uses schema.org for their rich results markup. So when you're building rich results markup, you're gonna be working within schema.org. Now, in order to earn rich results, it's extremely important to follow the Google search developer guidelines. Follow what they say, put it to the test, and, and add the required markup objects. You need to make sure that you follow the guidelines and you use the correct markups. And then you can always extend that schema.org markup, and you can add more information, you can add more layers of of data and help them better understand what your content is about. Now, the most important thing to do is not just do what somebody else is doing. Don't just look at somebody else and say, oh, they did that, so it's probably gonna work on my site as well. That may be true, but the reality is there are no defined rules when it comes to SEO. We have to test, we have to try things within our niche, within our specific site and see what works. There's a lot of cool uh, ways that you can do that. Uh, Casual Impact is, is a cool tool that you can use. And I know that there are some uh, awesome companies out there who are working on other testing tools that you can leverage to run these A-B tests and A-B experiments. We've talked about them here on this channel. So that's really, really important to do. You need to experiment for yourself and see what works within your sites. Now, if you're interested in learning more about structured data and actually how to earn these rich results, what we went over here today, we have a course. It's called Mastering Structured Data and Schema.org for Rich Results. And that's exactly what I teach you. We go through each one of those main different types of rich result features, and I walk you through how to actually implement this on your site. As always, we give our YouTube viewers, our YouTube watchers and subscribers, 
a 25% off code. You just got to use the, the, the term YouTube when you check out. You can get access to this course at learn.simplifiedsearch.net. And also, once you join, you, you become part of our community, and you know we're there to help you make sure that you're doing this right. We've got a schema out our generator that, that helps you build these things out, but we also show you how to do it on your WordPress site as well as sites that don't use WordPress. So if you're interested in earning rich features, this is exactly what this course was built for to help you achieve that and see the same results as a lot of these big sites are seeing. So it's a really cool way to even the playing field. I hope you learned something new today. I hope this information was, was really valuable. If you have any questions, please comment below. We'd love to continue that conversation with you. And until next time, happy marketing.